Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. And listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 Uh-huh. I sure will. A uh, good morning, everybody. Y'all listening to the voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only. Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. Okay. Here we go. Um, I was working out. I was talking to a buddy of mine. And I was telling him something that Bishop T D Jakes told me one time. I heard him say it. He said, uh, I would hate to die and not do the thing that I was born to do. I would hate to die and not do the thing that I was born to do. Man, oh man, oh man. Man, that hit me like a like a pile, like a pile of bricks, man. Because it made me feel so grateful that God has allowed me to live my life this way. Now, and I'm talking about grateful for all of it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I have had all of them. The person you see today, it ain't always who I was. It was on the inside of me, but it hadn't externalized itself, if that's a word. It hadn't been bought out. It was in here, but it was under development. Who I am today was a process. But like I said before, don't trip. He ain't through with me yet. Even today, I'm still an imperfect soldier for Christ. Today, I still fall short. Oftentimes. But I'll tell you what, I'm ever grateful for the life I have. And you know what? I want to encourage everybody today to explore your possibilities. I mean, man, explore your possibilities. Why would you not want to find out, discover, or know what it is God got for you? Why would you not want to achieve or accomplish all of your possibilities. Now, as I ask you this question, I want you to know that the devil is busy, that he plays mind tricks. So as you hear this, I already know he's saying to some of y'all, yeah, Steve, that's easy for you to say, but I didn't got myself in this situation right here. You ain't nothing too hard for God. Nothing. Nothing. And see, so as you listen to me, Try to, try to get your mind open to this. 
Why would you not want to explore all of your life's possibilities? What's possible with your life? And I'm talking about from right where you are right now. I'm not asking you to change. I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm telling you, this is a fact that God can get you from right where you are right now. Broken, misled, misguided, misunderstood, mistaken, all of that. Misfortunate, all of the misses you've been talking about in your life. You know, you, I missed the lottery. I, I missed my ride. They fired me. I, I missed the deadline. I didn't get it. Miss. People, people, people just miss themselves to death. If you've been all them misses, God can get you from right where you are. God a home run hitter. I'm here to tell you that. He's a home run hitter. He's a put him over the wall whenever he want to all the time. And you can be a recipient of some of these home runs. He'll put the bat in your hand, but you got to swing. Now listen to me. You got to stop feeling sorry for yourself. You got to stop holding yourself down with beating yourself up. He won't hold you down about it if you don't hold yourself down about it. But I'm going to tell you one more time, the devil is busy. So what the devil do is he make you think you ain't worthy. He make you think that you've done something so despicable that you can't come back from it. He makes you feel like you so low you can't go up high. He knock you down and make you feel like you've been knocked down harder than anybody else. You can't get up. He roll you so deep down in that ditch you can't see over the edge. God can come get you from no matter where you are. I'm telling you, man, you ain't in no hole too deep for God. Magic Johnson to tell you that. Listen to me. You ain't in no hole too deep for God. Steve Harvey can tell you that. You ain't in a hole too deep for God. Tyler Perry can tell you that. I can name you some people. Bishop Jake can tell you that. I could tell you. Kenneth Ulmer can tell you that. Bishop Kenneth Ulmer. I could tell you some people. Kirk Franklin can tell you that. Donnie McClurkin can tell you that. I just know some people personally, man, that done been in a hole. I, Joel Osteen can tell you about it. I know some people, man, been down, been in a hole so deep. I bet you Paula Dean can tell you about it. See, and, but, but you know what, then here we go. See, we, see, see, you know, see, we don't, we don't like to talk about that because now we want everybody to pay extra hard for some mistakes they made. When clearly, and excuse me for being a new Christian, but there is a prayer that I've been saying since I was a little bitty boy, and it took me till I was a grown man to understand it. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So see, it ain't my job to hold nobody down, to keep my knee on somebody's neck. Who am I? I'm going to need some forgiveness in a second here, probably today. See, so all this, you holding people down with the way you feel about them and she shouldn't have said this and she'll never get, I'll never support this again. Man, get up. Get up and get real. You for real? You think you ain't finna need forgiveness real soon? You ain't finna make a diabolical mistake in your life? You don't think you are? I have thousands of them. Probably gonna make a few hundred more before I get up out of here. So I've decided to be in the forgiving business because I, I want God to forgive my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. You understand? See, excuse me for being a new Christian. I'm, I'm, I, get, I get tired of talking to, piss, to, to, uh, uh, to people, man, supposed to be saved and talking about they're Christian. I don't want that type of religion, man. I ain't in that no more. I ain't in that. You can call me wrong if you want to. Say it how you want to say it. I ain't in that no more. I ain't in all that. You can feel how you want to feel about me. But I got proof that God work in my life. You know, I, I can't hardly get it out sometimes when people ask me something about deep on, on the inside of me about my soul and how I used to be and, and my journey and my trip. Because people don't know the trip I've been on. Well, you may have been on one worse than me. But you know what? You ain't in a hole too deep God can't get you out of. Man, I wish I want, I want people to remember that, man. God is a redeemer. He the great I am. So if you ain't got nothing now, what you asking for? You know, you might not have nothing because you ain't asking for nothing. Quit asking God to get you out of debt and ask God for a life of abundance. Then you take the money and you get out of debt. You keep asking to get out of debt. You keep being in debt to get out of. Come on, man. What you asking God for? I'm just tripping today. That's all. I'm sorry. I apologize.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, it is here another fantastic day. Another opportunity that God has provided. We are all here. We have a measure of health. We are in the land of the living. And we are available for what's about to occur today. Now, if that ain't a blessing, I don't know what is. Please tell God thank you for the so many things he has done for you that we have a propensity to overlook from time to time. Ladies and gentlemen, this hill mm. is that there show, the Steve Harvey Moaning Show. Bleed that. <laughs> Shirley Strawberry, Mississippi <laughs> Monica, Kill Spates, better known as Junior, the legend nephew Tommy, yours truly. Junior, what's on your mind? All right, uh, can, <laughs> can you do me a favor this morning, huh? Depends. I just want you to do some English. Yeah, I don't just say I'll do it because it's, no, you know. No, I, just give me an English 70s melody run. Just, uh, just hard me? singing. Hard singing from the 70s. Yeah. I want the backup. I want the backup oh. vocals. I want. I want the. I want the lead sing. I want the drum beat. Shirley would throw a couple of them at me, and I'll do them for you. But uh, yeah, here, uh, here's go. If you don't know me by now, <laughs> you will never, never, never know me. Ooh, we all got. Go ahead, Shirley. <laughs> All right, how Boy, about funny. fire Ohio players? Hell. Uh-huh. Hey. 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 Oh, here we go. Look at this. Fire. <laughs> Won't say time. Fire! Woo, woo, woo! That's how we did it, boy. Yeah, man. Mm. Shirley. All right, let's go. Uh, Roger Zap. Um, I'm thinking more bounce to the ounce. <laughs> more bounce to the round. More bounce to the round. Ah. More wounds, more wounds, more more out. Shirley, all right, let's go, Billy. G- uh, remember the time? How about remember the time, Michael Jackson? Do you Uh-oh. remember? <laughs> <laughs> Fell in love. We were young and innocent then. Why is he I doing do the dance? Remember though? everything. How we, you just go. We were, I when we were just in a living. Do you remember? <laughs> Act in the park. <laughs> we go on and on and on. Girl, do you remember? <laughs> that day. Ladies and gentlemen, and Steve on Harvey. And on in the back of my mind. Do you remember the time? As Michael Jackson. <laughs> fell in love. The Ohio players and Roger and Zap this morning. All right, coming up at 32 minutes after the hour. Thank you, man. Thank you. That's how you wake it up. You. Yeah, and run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are. It is time for the nephew to run that prank back. Nephew, what you got for us today? I ran it yesterday, so I'm going to run it back today because it's just that ignorant. You understand? That's what running back is fuck. And you come back and run it back again, make it more ignorant. This right here is fight night. So let's run that back, cat dog. Stupid time right now, y'all, from the nephew. Come on. Hello. Hey, I'm trying to speak to Troy. Yeah, yes, me. Hey, Troy, how you doing, man? It's Kirby, man. Uh, I live uh, a couple streets over from you. What's happening with you, brother? Uh, Kirby. Uh, uh, Kenny, uh, Ken- Kenny gave me, you got, Ken- you know Kenny on your street, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know Kenny. Yeah, yeah, Kenny gave me your number, man. I wanted to reach out. I'm inviting a lot of people, uh, in the neighborhood, man, to, you know, uh, Mayweather fight. So I'm inviting a lot of people over to the fight party over here at my house. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was wondering why I was going to watch it on fight too, man. That don't sound like a bad idea, man. Okay, okay, well, listen, man, come on through. Uh, everybody going to be getting here like around 7, 7.30. And, uh, yeah. man, we got food, we got liquor, margarita machine. My boy, he's going to be on the grill with the burgers and the, and the hot dogs, man. And one of my other partners going to be smoking some wings, man. 
So we we good, man. So I'm I'm just inviting a bunch of people in the neighborhood to come through. Cool. You need me to bring something through, man? Some wine, anything? What? Uh, look here. Now that you uh, now that you mentioned it, man, we 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 missing a little something. Uh, hey, let me let me ask you this here, uh, Troy. You um, uh, you got cable at your house? Yeah, yeah, I got cable. Here. Okay, listen. Here, here what we need, man. I I got about four thousand feet of cable cord, and what I want to do is come over there. And hook up this cable cord to your house and run it two streets over to my house so we can watch the fight in the backyard. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Hold up, man. I know you. Hold up, man. I know. Hold on. I know you didn't just say. Now say that again. You want to. You got four. See, 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 see. We got, while. like I say, we got the food, the liquor, all of that, man. You know, a lot of people coming over. But see, the problem is I ain't got cable here at the house. Well, how is you going to have a fight party? And you ain't got no cable. And that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You you, you asked me what could you help out with, so that's what I'm asking you. I, I used to work for the cable company. I know how to hook it up at your house. I know how to bypass pay-per-view. Hey, We're going to hey, run it two streets, so I got a real doable cable car. I got a big TV I'm going to put out in the backyard. You call me and invite me to a fight party. Y'all ain't got no, no, no cable. Now you want me to do something illegal and run... 4,000 feet of cable wire, two streets over to my backyard, over the fence. I'm out here with these white folks. I'm out here too. Face, I, though, man. Get me put out. I'm already having a problem with my mortgage already. Now, now, you want me to do something illegal or get me put out? Okay, I, I understand that, dog. But listen, what I'm saying is, dog, we just talking about for a few hours. We ain't open. We ain't, it ain't like we been do it for a couple of days or nothing. I, I, I don't know how you, you can even call it. Call up a cat, man, and invite him out to a fight party, and you ain't got no cable. Okay, but I invited you to the, you finna get liquor and food and stuff, man. You finna have a good time. Do man, your I, part. Let, let me let me get a little bit of your cable for a couple of hours so everybody can watch the fight. So you want to have a fight party at my house? Man, I don't know you like that. You know, I'm not saying we having it at your house. I'm on two streets I'm on We having it at my house. We just using your cable. Man, I can't have no cable. I don't do nothing illegal, man. So I'm not having no police in front of my house, man. I got I got a family now. I'm a family man. I, got, I get up every morning and go to work. I work hard. I'm not going to have I, no cable. And I no got that, man. man. I'm just telling house. you for a few hours, man, so we everybody can see the Mayweather fight, man. Man, you saying Kirby and Kenny d man, I don't, know, I don't really know y'all people like that, man. I don't know Kenny d well. I just know because it keep a nice yard, man. I don't know y'all. I can't be having no laws and all this. And my children running while this cable coming from my house. Like, I can't have that, man. Y'all might here with these white folks. These white folks is not having it, man. I understand all that, man, but I didn't invite all these people. I can't disappoint these people. I got to have the fight on at the house. I understand your situation, my brother. I want to be at your house watching the fight, too. But I can't, ain't nowhere in the world I'm going to have no 4,000 foot of cable running from my house. I can't see that one happen. I'm, I'm out here in the suburb now with a family now. I can't do them type of thing, man. I, can't, I don't want no police. I don't want the cable. Hey, man, you know how you're the only one in the suburb. I'm out here, too. What I'm trying to tell you is I'm not going to disappoint these people. Now, I want to have your approval, but I'm coming to hook this cable up. You coming well to hook up a cable? I'm coming to your house to hook this cable and run it two streets over. Oh, so if I say you can't hook it up, you're going to come and hook it up anyway. That's what you're telling me? I'm telling you I can't disappoint these people. I'm coming to hook this cable up, man, whether you like it or not. Oh, Now, if you put it in front of my I will fuck down for the cable. It's going to be a guy. Right. Hey, man, I can't disappoint these people. Now, I'm just trying to get you to show some love for four well, hours. You don't disappoint them. You don't have a show for them. If you come over to my house, you bring them people you got over there with you so they can see a fight. Hey, man, what what are you, what are you saying? You, you're trying to tell me you ain't going to let me hook the cable up when I get over there? I stand up on it. I be waiting out there with no shirt and a shot. And you ain't going to land 15 rounds with me. Hey, man, I'm not finna sit here and get it. Me, you was cool. I told to an extent, but now you're not going to get me to break no law in front of my children out here, man. I'm 39 years old. I don't play them games, man. When I was younger, you may want to kind of coerce me with a lot of money. But, hey, I'm not going for that. I'm not going for that route this time, brother. I'm not having all that activity going on in my house. I'm coming over there, and I'm hooking up this table. Well, you come over here, you your man. I got something for you, Tuffy. You come over. I'm going to sit in front of my house right now. Tell that kid to come for it, too, Mr. Cameron. I got something for all y'all. All I'm telling you is I'm coming over there to hook my cable up so these people can watch the fight. Hey, well, line it up then. Yeah, you're going to come take some cable from my house. Line it up. I'm going to have my wife take my hands up right now. It's going to be a fight. I got one more thing I need to say to you, though. Is you listening? I don't care what you say. You come in front of my house. You better bring some help with you because you ain't going to leave here. You come in front of my house with some cable cord. I don't give a who you is, and I'm going to whoop Kenny and whenever I see him, I'm whooping him on sight. 
I'm going to get my children in the car and his children in the car, and I'm going to whoop you if you come around here with that nonsense. This time I'm going to hold some cable in my eye. I'm going to put some on you right here, man. You come out of my eyes right now with that I said I got one more thing to say to you. Are you listening? What you got to say is you listening to me. I'm listening. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy. Who is this? <laughs> Who you say this is? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Man, I know you ain't called my phone, man. My blood pressure high as hell. You got me ready to squabble, man. I got bad cholesterol, man. You got me to raise my cholesterol level and everything, man. You got me ready to whoop somebody out here. <laughs> All right, man, I got to ask you this right here, Troy. What is, what is the baddest, I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land? Man, the Steve Harvey Morning Show, man. Y'all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nephew, thank you. Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO with the Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building, ready for your love questions right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Super Bowl 56 is halftime performers signed a football and is up for auction now. And rapper Fabulous uh, tells us how a woman ended up sleeping on his shoulder in a club. It can happen. <laughs> it can happen. I, it can oh, it happen. Can. We'll see. It can story, happen. <laughs> State of the story, right fam. now. <laughs> right now, <laughs> it is time to ask the CLO. Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey is here. Ready for you. All right, Paris in D.C. writes, I was sitting on the couch with my husband and his phone rang. I saw my hairstylist's name pop up. They talked and he set himself an appointment uh, to get his hair braided. I didn't even know he was my stylist. I didn't even know he knew my stylist. Shouldn't he have mentioned this to me first? Shouldn't he have asked me to make his hair appointment? Shouldn't he have? Hmm. 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 Well, if you're sitting on the couch... And it rings, and he answers it right there. Then there's nothing to worry about. See, it's when they got to get up when they. Well, here's a dead sign of something wrong. If your husband phone rang, and it and it and it rings, and he picks it up and throws it through the TV, that's a, probably a dead sign that something's going on. You know, uh-huh. if his phone rings and he starts stomping it because uh-huh. the sound of the ring toned and got on his nerve, there's something going on. But if he just answers the phone, I think it's I think it's okay. I don't know if he should have, you know, he got your hairstylist number, he know, you know. Mm-hmm. He going down there and get his hair braided out. You know, that's all it is to me. Hmm. All right. Um, Katrina in Savannah says, my boyfriend just got divorced and I let him stay with me temporarily. I don't want him to get too comfy at my house, but I'm catering to him because I want to show him I'm a good woman that can cook. How do I make this situation work? I don't know. Oh, Shirley, inside, that's not Inside a, voice. Uh, sorry. Inside voice. Stop cooking. That's in- Jesus. Yeah, I don't even I don't, start cooking. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. See, Katrina, I don't, I don't know what your aim is. You don't want him to get comfortable, but you want to show him that you can cook. Take some food over his house. You know, he don't have to stay there for you to show him how to cook. But he said she's, he's moved in with her because they just got the divorce. Well, you play in house. I don't know what to tell you, Katrina. You play in house. Yeah. You can't play house and then don't want to play house. Right. No, you want him to stay there? Don't cook for him. If you want to cook for him, don't uh, let him uh, stay there. Uh, what? No, you agree with me. Stop cooking. Yes. Mm, not okay. you, though. <laughs> yeah, we can't sure. take that from you. Yeah. <laughs> Shut sure. all that down, Katrina. Yeah. Stop <laughs> cooking and can't cook. Stop and can't is two different things. Sure. Mm. Moving on mm. to Jillian in Moss Point. Jillian writes, I'm a 43-year-old married woman, and I've been sneaking around to talk to a man from my past. It's a great feeling to see him and catch up with him. I'm not lusting after this man at all, but I know my husband won't see it that way. Should I tell my husband about my old friend I connected with or not? Really, You're going to mess around and get both of y'all killed. Yes, really. And this, and, and this Mississippi man, you're down in Moss Point. That's Mississippi. I know oh, okay. straight off the 10. I know where that is. Okay. You know, now I, you probably meeting him over there at the Beau Rivage or whatever that casino is down there. 
by the Gulf and all that here. Y'all think that's cute. And, and that's a lie. You're not lusting after him because you are. Yeah. That's the enjoyable part. You enjoying hooking up with him. He's from your past. If you ain't lusting after him, I promise you, he lusting after you. Mm. And you lusting after him. So you can say that comment. I don't know who you thought you was writing this one in to. So come on, Jillian. You're playing with fire. And should you tell your husband? Hell no. Stop sneaking. Well, it's honest. Well, you, you just you said I'm husband. sneaking. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Now, you want to tell him you sneaking? You're going to mess around and get that man snuck. <laughs> Up on. Up on. <laughs> yeah, not a good look, Jillian. Not a good look. All right. Um, Rita in Texas, CLO, says, My boyfriend and I live together. Rita. For- yeah, Rita, right? In Texas, my boyfriend and I have lived together for three years, so I'm ready to get married. He recently told me that he's got to get some stuff out of his system first. Uh, does that mean he's cheating? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what it sound like to me. What do you think? Is weed in his system? That's what you think it is. It's way more than that. What you talking about? <laughs> and now if he said, I got to get some debt cleared up or I got to get some old baggage cleaned up with my ex or something like that, yeah. But I got to get some stuff out my system. After what, three what years. Is, what is he doing? It ain't no uh-huh. bitter dream. Nothing like that. It ain't no, yeah. No. <laughs> no. <Nah. Nah. laughs> this sure ain't something that need to run his course. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. he can just drink a lot of water and it be gone in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are talking about? Yo, 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 And they've yo. lived together for, for three years. Yeah. <laughs> Rita, Rita, Rita. You need to do some research on what he mean by some stuff out his system. Come on. She she knows. She she already, she mentioned the word cheating herself, so she knows. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Last one. La- that was the last one, Steve. Yeah. Oh, oh mm-hmm. okay. yeah. yeah, that was the last well, one. Well, well, Rita's been nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> What's in the system, dog? What's in the system? Well, let's look. That he's gotta get out first. Yeah. Uh couple of glitches is in there. Let me tell you what's really in that system. You know what's hard to get out your system? Lust. Lust, Lust. is hard to get out your system. Lust uh-huh. is that thing. See, the thing about lust is, mm-hmm. lust, even though it's one of the deadly sins, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it feels so damn yeah. Sin feels good. This is gonna, this yeah. That's gonna be the my last problem. time. Just, just yeah. one more time. I'm That's the coming. problem with lust, man. <laughs> sin. Now, all sins don't feel good. It depends on who you are. Like I had a partner, man, that was, mm. that just stole all the time, and I said, "Man, dog, why don't, why don't you stop stealing?" He said, "Man, I can't help it. It's just an adrenaline rush I get when yeah. I'm doing it." People, well, yeah. it's going to be another drilling rush when they catch your ass. So, uh-huh. you know, do you enjoy running? Because that's what you're going to have to do in a minute. <laughs> that's what, you're gonna be doing. That's what you know. lust can lead to. Yeah. yeah. But it's always seeing yeah. it, people. That's like, you know, man, I can't. Man, these drugs, man, they just, man, have you. See, Steve, you ain't never been high, man. It's like man. a feeling of euphoria. Yeah, but when you coming down and you start getting sick, and now you're trying to hustle up money for your next high. Well, where's all that euphoria that you keep talking about? Yeah, but when mm-hmm. I get that money, man, I put it together. Here it come again. I mm-hmm. said, man, that's Chasing and that's that what high. sin does, man. It's, it feels so good, but it's a cost factor damn near immediately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so whatever it is he's trying to get out of his system uh, yeah, yeah. after three years, well, read us. Uh, go it's, down there and get some blood lust. work drawn. Let's see what's in here. <laughs> it's lust. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, Ciela, we thank you for your wisdom. As always, coming up at the top of the hour on this ignorant show right here today, <laughs> entertainment news right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, a signed Super Bowl 56 football could be yours for the right price, okay? Heritage Auctions has announced the upcoming sale of a 2022 Super Bowl 56 football autographed by most of this year's performers. The ball will be a part of a sale running from May 12th through the 14th, and bids will start, they will start 
at $1,500. The ball is signed by Dr. Dre, Mary J. Blige, Kendrick Lamar, Eminem, and Anderson Pack. Uh, Snoop Dogg and 50 Cent didn't sign the football. And I don't know why they didn't sign it. Why they didn't sign it? I don't know. It don't matter. You got Dr. But Dre and Eminem on there. It'll work. And Mary J. It would have been oh, hellified with 50, though, and Snoop. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pay 1500 for the football. Oh, you will? Okay, that's what I was just going to ask you. So do you care about collecting this kind of memorabilia? Oh, no, not at all. I don't want it. I'm getting it to sell it. <laughs> that's you buying it. Oh, your yeah. heritage auction. <laughs> Add your name to it. Oh, if, yes. if I could get that thing from 1500 the heritage uh-huh. off auction would easily the very next day become the Harvey auction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't give a damn about no football, no writing on it, man. Uh-huh. How much do you can get for it if you reset? Somebody for that, them signatures, Eminem on there. Yeah, somebody give me at least six hundred thousand. So the bid starts at fifteen hundred. It's going to go all the way up to over half a million dollars. You're saying? I, w- wow. I would think for a football. Mm. I mean, I, I wouldn't, but, you know, there's mm. people out there. Yeah, mm. it's going to be pretty Dr. High. Dre and Eminem signature on it. Yeah, Mary J, you. Kendrick Lamar, uh, Anderson Pack. Yeah, nobody's pretty- giving uh, money for Mary J. Bly's name on the football. She's what? the best artist on there, but <laughs> Mary J. Bly's don't play football. They They would do it for other reasons. <laughs> Don't and none of them Yeah, but they that's not how they look at stuff. I just people are funny style. My favorite artist on that show was Mary J. Blige. Oh, mm-hmm. for sure. <laughs> All day. Especially when she fell out afterwards. I love that. <laughs> All right, moving on. You Hold guys on, one, are gonna one love thing this. about hip hop that I don't know. I was watching the thing came across my scroll. A uh, game has challenged Eminem. Mm-hmm. And you know he he says he's you know he thinks like he's a, a better rapper. He thinks he's a better rapper than him. And that that's uh, not gonna work out for him. And I don't even know a lot about hip hop, but <laughs> th- that's not gonna work out. You're for just on the gram. That that's not gonna work for you. <laughs> Yellow Brick Road is one of my favorite rap jams. I'm sorry, <laughs> that's not gonna work out for you, game. You need to quit calling him out. Not not Eminem. <laughs> yeah. All right, so listen. Yeah, right. Let me get to this story. You guys are going to love this one. New York based rapper Fabulous um, had a very interesting experience in a Las Vegas club this past Saturday night, and he shared the video on his IG page with a long caption. He said, I know what happens in Vegas is supposed to stay in Vegas, but this was a very rare experience for me, so I got to share my story. Boom. So we're sitting in the after hours, and there was a little room on the couch, little room on the couch I was sitting on, but this girl came and rushed to sit down in this very tight space on the couch. Couch, uh, like she was run- a running back hitting a hole. I thought her feet were um, hurting and she couldn't stand up no more. So even though I didn't know this girl and it was tight, I scooted over a little bit. A few minutes later, I feel something heavy on my shoulder. I thought she was playing or showing how tired she was, even though uh, she didn't know me. But when I looked over, she was asleep. I mean, knocked out cold. So Fabulous does have a longtime life partner. It's Emily B. She's also a reality star. So this is a question for you guys. What do you think? He posted the video of the girl asleep on his shoulder. So do you believe his story? Because it sounds kind of crazy. In a club, a girl falls on your shoulder that you don't fall asleep on your shoulder that you don't know. I believe it, but yeah, I believe it. I believe she lit, been drunk. And ready to sit down because she probably about to fall out. I believe it. She didn't got over there in that yeah. cone and then snuggle up, and boom, she out and and yeah. laid on his shoulder. I get it. I, I believe. So it. no lies involved in this story. No. I no. believe. Well, it. there is one yeah. lie involved. What? What's that lie? She know exactly who the hell he was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I said that yeah. too. Oh, you believe yeah. that? <laughs> oh, she knew who Fabulous was. She uh-huh. just went over. She didn't go over there and sit next to Junior. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. He said, even though she didn't know me, he said that. Uh -uh. Man, fabulous. She knew exactly who you were. I'm going to tell you something else. She wasn't sleep either. Oh. She was playing sleep, Uh hoping you take advantage. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, this a game. So why did he post the video? He he has you know, he's, he's, he's with his longtime life partner yeah. Emily B. Well, I mean that I know he wasn't up to nothing else. He you're not gonna post something you up to. Uh-huh. I, bl- I believe it actually happened to him just that way. But it's a couple things I do want him to know. Number one, she knew exactly who he was. And number okay, two, she a. wasn't uh-huh. asleep. <laughs> Them the two facts I'm pretty clear about. Uh-huh. On the video, is she fine, Shirley? You're Monica, me. Monica, can we see it, please? Yeah. Yeah. Mississippi yeah, Monica is our resident research expert. She's can we beautiful. see a picture of it, Monica, please? And I think all women are beautiful. Yeah. What is you nodding your head for without sending it? <laughs> Send it to us. If we're still on the air. <laughs> My God. That ain't beautiful, beautiful, Shirley. I just that complimented you, and then you just sat there. Just, nah, huh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> you all don't need to see it. Coming up in 20 minutes no, no, after sure. the hour. Everybody ain't yeah, beautiful now. You need to stop that. <laughs> yeah, we do. I think all women are beautiful and lovely. All right. Uh, Tommy has a question for you coming That's up. That's not get true. Ready. Okay. Get ready. I'll be ready. Matter of fact, it ties right into this. <laughs> oh, okay. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Tommy, when we left to go to break, you said you had something to ask your uncle. What What is on your mind? What you want to ask him? Go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, ever since yeah. the pandemic has started, mm-hmm. uh, from businesses, corporations, organizations, everybody across the land, uh-huh. has been zooming it is the way is the number yes. one way of communicating mm-hmm. but it has been brought to my attention by some of my boys some of my friends even my wife we've talked about it everybody is not zoomable yeah. so it's, it's just everybody yeah. don't need to be it's some faces out there that ain't yeah. zoomable yeah. Sometimes you ought to just leave it where it's just on your picture yeah. or a picture of something else in your name. There. Everybody ain't zoomable. How do you let somebody know that we would rather you just put some picture of something else up there because you're not zoomable? You know, you're just not zoomable. You know, you, First you thing know I do mm-hmm. is I try to give people instructions. Like hey, dog, what? back back your camera up. <laughs> Put it a little more, a little more. No, no, dog. Just push it back all the way back. Okay, now nah, you right there. Now nah, push it. Now nah, tilt it. Tilt, tilt it down. Get us out your nostrils. Tilt it down. Yeah. Now, nah, dog, down. Stop turning it. See, because I don't like zooming with people. The what? Look, I'm gonna tell you something. See, zooming is real close to FaceTime. When I FaceTime my uh-huh. in-laws, uh-huh. Doris and Bubba Bridges, yes. Lord have They're mercy, so sweet. Jesus. The sweetest parents. They the just answer the phone. Yeah. Then they put the microphone by their mouth. Now we just straight up their nostrils. <laughs> right. <laughs> you be going, mama, mama, take the phone. Mama, <laughs> take the phone. Yes. No, stop <laughs> saying yes. Huh? Mama, put the camera where I can see you. Then she'll pull it out in front where you can see. I said, nah, that's better. Then when it's time for her to talk, she put it right back up there by her mouth so you can hear it. Yeah. Uh, Here's a key to Zoom. We must, please, if we're Zooming and we can't see your hairline or your chin, your ass is too close. You're too close. And you're not Zoomable. If we can't see your shoulders, you uh-huh. too close. You're too yeah. close. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Now, plastic surgeons have reported that um, their business has gone up due to Zoom because people see what they look like on Zoom and they've been correcting things. You their know, business getting... has gone up since uh, Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> and, and even more so since Zoom, Steve. Um, all right. All right. Coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, a teenager ends up in the hospital after a prank nephew Tommy goes terribly wrong. We'll talk See, about it right after this. Right there. You ain't never heard me being on an ER behind no damn prank. You ain't never heard me. <laughs> oh, it's coming. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In Laurel, New York, listen to this, guys. A group of teens gathered for a birthday sleepover, and as the night went on, they decided to prank 
nephew Tommy prank their neighbors by playing a game of ring the doorbell and run. And one of the teens ended up in the hospital after he got shot by a homeowner. According to area police, yeah. According to area police, there were several kids running around the neighborhood, knocking on doors and running away. And one of the homeowners, his name was James James Moshier, thought that someone was trying to break into his home. He felt threatened, so he went to the door, listen to this idiot, and fired his shotgun several times through the door, shooting a 15-year-old in the arm. The teen was taken to the hospital, and the owner, the uh, homeowner, was arrested and later posted a $20,000 cash bail. Mm, this wow. is... Yeah, this is a, a prank gone wrong for real right here. We did this as kids. Yeah, I, did I this. think we all did. Mm-hmm. But if you was, mm-hmm. if you, what used to bother me is if you wasn't, you know, the, the biggest kid in the neighborhood, the biggest kid in the neighborhood, the he trying to, he tr- what you knocking on the door for? <laughs> <laughs> you need to be way well, down the street so. till we get down there. I yeah. think the, uh, the guy that shot the kid has a real problem, though. He because if the story is you're firing through the door. Through the door, yeah. Then there was no real imminent danger. And you shot three times. And, and yeah, you and just firing through the door because you felt, I don't know what, you know, now I don't know he if the prank was threatened. a little bit more than what, where they was acting like they was trying to open the door. I don't know, but you fired three shots through the door. That's wow. a little bit of a problem. Per- person come in your house, you know, you could. that's one thing. They outside and they kids. I don't know, man. I don't know what's yeah. gonna happen. Yeah, they that, outside that was... and they knocked. Cause well, that's the key to run. Yeah, he yeah, heard. Or, or, he heard them knocking on the door. You did yeah, this or, too, Junior, growing up. Hey, uh, yeah, dog. We every yeah. day we was out there. Listen, the we didn't have. <laughs> we had nothing to do. We didn't. We didn't have internet. <laughs> we didn't have yeah, Instagram. This is it. Create these games. This is <laughs> it. Yeah. It. We knocking and we run. <laughs> Who turn is it to knock? Yeah, come on. No, we did. We did it on foot. We did it on bike. We did it on skateboards. We did it. <laughs> and if your parents found out, Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now that's when we stopped. Punishment. That's oh, when we stopped. That, that's yeah. when we stopped. Now, yeah. So, so Steve, I know you did something crazy growing up, like any no, kind of prank. I, well, that... well, we never did that. I can't even participate in that. We never yeah. rang the doorbells and ran. Everybody knew us, so. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> yeah. now you go outside your neighborhood. It was eight of us. Well, where's the you going? Block over. <laughs> and if one got a whipping, we was all getting a whipping. So this ain't a good ass prank idea. Yeah, <laughs> Tommy. We, we just didn't. <laughs> yeah. But I, who we need to direct this whole thing at is our resident king it's of prank. Tommy, yes. Now, just like this little boy got shot, I told what? his ass. I done told your ass about <laughs> these pranks. Always messing with people. Well, let's not let's, let's not let's not let's not go all the way to getting shot though. I don't want to get shot now. He I mean, didn't want to either. All these pranks is fun and game. What about that's what down? they said. That's what they I'm was not, having, I'm, Tommy. I'm calling. I'm not knocking. I'm calling. <laughs> well, you know, somebody gonna roll up on you. Yeah, because they want to meet you wherever yeah, you are. You yeah. know that. Hey, Tommy, because you know how the ones go where you always go. <laughs> And then they hang up, and you say, call him back, call him back. Uh, See, uh-huh, somebody uh-huh. going to hang up and be on the way. <laughs> they ain't going to get no answer. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? Man, what that? Cat dog, get him back on the phone. No, no. Uh-huh. Then you going to get a ring on your doorbell. Ding dong. Who is it? And they're Pop. not be- going to be running. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. running in, huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. We warn you every day about right. these pranks. Yeah, man. Because yeah, you give yeah. yourself up at the end. What? This nephew, Tommy, from the Steve Harvey Morning. You say that every time, so they know exactly who the hell they're looking for. They can tell them exactly who I am. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Didn't you well, meet when, someone? When y'all come to whoop. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Didn't yeah, you meet yeah. someone in real life I, and they, they had something to say? I, they stepped to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somebody that I pranked. Yeah, I ran up on one before. Ah, uh, yeah. I okay, ain't with you now, huh? Y'all yeah, okay, ain't with you. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah, nah, Speaking boy. of pranks, <laughs> pranks are coming up next with the nephew right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up in about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject is, why is my man so childish? Why? 
Mm. <laughs> we'll get into that in just a bit. But right now, it is time for our resident prankster, the nephew, the king of pranks, mm. to prank phone call All someone. Right. Who is well, it going to be? I don't know. After what that, are you doing today? <laughs> after that last break, y'all talking about the kids that got pranked oh, yeah. or did a prank and then somebody got shot? You know, you got me Ringing worried about should I even... Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you got me worried about this. Should I should I drop this prank right here today? You know, do you think, well, think somebody going to be after me? Hmm? <laughs> think about it. They always are. <laughs> <laughs> you need a bodyguard. We keep telling you that. <laughs> but the prank must go on, Junior. It has to happen. I, I, we can't I let Yeah, you know, we can't let some bad news that, that came about that stop, slow us down and we don't prank no more because of that. No, the prank must go on. <laughs> like the show. Yeah. Yes. The prank mm-hmm. has to happen, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, All right. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get kind of ignorant here. How ignorant do y'all want to get though? Some people right. getting hurt now. I mean, how far you want me to go? Ten uh, being I'm... the highest, one through ten. Ten being the highest. Uh, I'll say about a fifteen. Yeah. Okay, you know, that's like... what, and that's what I got. I got yeah. fifteens. Okay. Because yeah. I don't know why you're asking how how ignorant you want us to be. It's always ignorant. I don't know why what number you want, but it's always <laughs> over that. You know, but I want to scale. I want to scale it out. You know, scale of one to ten. Let me know where you want me to go. That's all. We I say want. we can say seventy-five. You gonna give us one ten? I'm gonna reach it. <laughs> it don't matter. I always mean. reach my goal. Right, Junior. Yeah. I tell you. Okay. All right. Man. Here we go. You gave me wrong directions to my sister's grave. Right there. You gave me wrong directions. Right there. To my sister's. Great. Oh Lord. Take 85 South, you're gonna exit. Uh <laughs> you gave me wrong directions to my sister's grade. Cat dog, if you would. Hello. Thank you for calling Cemetery. How may I help you? Did, uh, my name is Frederick Stammer. Did that uh, Tamara Mick Let me see if she's in the office. One moment, please. Thank you. It just don't it don't make sense. For us all to go out there like we did, and then they're running into these type of problems. That Hello? Don't have. Hello? Hello? Listen, my name is Frederick Stemmons. Okay. Now, my sister's sister is buried out there. Okay. And we come out there last week on Monday to come out there and pray over the the, uh, the space where she is. Now, you is the one that told us that it was a few spaces away from the mausoleum. Now, we got out there and prayed over my sister Frances' bearer and found out that we was in the wrong space. And they say you was the one that told it to us. Sir, I don't even know what you're talking about. The you was the one that told us that my sister Frances... I don't give out spaces. I'm in the administrative office. I don't know where you work. All I know is you was the one that told us this. No, I did Yes, you did. You was the one that my grandbaby said that she talked to the woman named Tamara. And you had us out there standing over some white man's body, and it wasn't Sir, right. I'm not a counselor, so I can't tell you where a space is. So your granddaughter lied to you. Ain't nobody lied to me. You had us out there in the wrong space. I couldn't Fra- have had you in the wrong space because I don't even know the cemetery. You know what? I'm going to send my grandbaby up there to talk to you. Okay. I'll be here till 5. You're very mischievous. You know that? I'll be here till 5 o'clock. You, you have a good day. No, you don't you hang up this phone on me. You have a good day. No, I'm not going to have a good day. You had me praying over my sister Francis' body and it was the wrong one. And we're sitting there praying over this white man's body. It wasn't right. Hello? I'm listening to you. You don't have an apology or nothing. Because I know I didn't tell your granddaughter where a space was. Then what did you tell her? I don't even know who your granddaughter is. What do you mean you... The Simmons family, we were not there. I don't much. know who the Simmons family is. It's sir. not Simmons, it's Stimmons. Stimmons. I don't know a Simmons family. That's what I'm telling you. I'm not a counselor. I don't even deal with family. Here's what I need you to do. Can you go out there and pray over my sister body? I don't know where your sister is buried. Sir. It's supposed to have been six spaces away from the mausoleum. I don't. Are there any spaces? Yeah. Where is it? Where is it at? Section two. Section 2? We was in Section 2, but it was some white man. We was, that, that, it, it wasn't my sister Francis. Okay, I don't even know who your sister Francis is. I do not even know where Section 2 is. Well, whoever came into the cemetery and said that they spoke to me, they probably did speak to me, 
and I probably got the information from a counselor, but I never showed them exactly where the spot was. So if they were out there praying over your sister and they were in the wrong spot, that's not my problem. They're praying over some white man. And that's not my problem, sir. If you gave the wrong, the wrong spot. If you gave the wrong information, it is just my let me explain I didn't, to you. I don't give the wrong information. Tamar, I told them yes, she's in section two. But me, I did not physically go out there and point to the spot to tell them to pray over that spot. Let me explain what I'm trying to to, to stop from happening. If my people come up there, it's gonna be some more bodies getting buried. And I don't want nobody to get okay, hurt. Okay, I mean your family can come up here. It's not going to be no more bodies being buried. What they can do is come up here and write, and we can conversate about this. But it's not going to be an uproar up here. I want you to go out there and you pray over Francis's body. I'm not going out to pray over nobody's body. You it's ain't not, got, it's not you my ain't. family member. I didn't tell them the wrong information. Do they you came love in the Lord? Asked, do you love the Lord? I dearly do. Then you ought to have some sympathy. I want you to bow your head right now. No, I'm going to um, end this conversation Gracious because God, I have other father. work to do. Now, if they in want the to come in friend. and talk to me, I will be here until 5 o'clock. Can I say one more thing before you go? You can say one more thing and I'm ending the call. Okay. This nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Your sister Tamika set you up, baby. And you just got it, baby, from nephew Tommy. <laughs> Boy, you was standing your ground. You like, uh-uh, no. Nah. Just because you went and prayed over the wrong body, that don't mean nothing. I ain't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> All right, check it out. You got to tell me one thing. What's the baddest radio show in the land? B-R-B. Ta-da. <laughs> Ta-da. Ta-da. I don't see nobody coming to jump on me behind that, Shirley. I don't see no butt whooping okay. behind that. Okay. That right there was just just clean, good fun right there. It was sweet. Yeah. <laughs> it was all real right. sweet. All right, all right. All right, all right. Just thought I'd drop it on you. That's the nephew. Okay? That is all the right. nephew. King of pranks. King of pranks. Got about, you know what, Shirley? Let me drop this out there right now. Let me tell you something. This is going down. This is uh, June 24th, 26th, 25th, 26th, 27th. June 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th. Miles of giving. That's right. That's my foundation where we get back to Wounded Warriors. It's all going down in New Orleans, Louisiana, where you can come on out and hang out as I give back to Wounded Veterans. We got a party. We got a, we got a breakfast brunch. And, of course, we got golf jumping off on Monday the 27th in the, the Big Easy, baby, New Orleans, Louisiana. All right, June 24th through the 27th, Miles of Giving Weekend. That's Nephew Tommy Weekend in New Orleans, Louisiana. More details. You can go to milesofgiving.org and get all the information. Milesofgiving.org. Big easy. Here I come, baby. Here I come. Hold it. <laughs> baby, all right. Get baby. ready for me, baby. <laughs> Como se va? <laughs> are you, are Nephew you coming, French? baby. <laughs> what are you doing, Junior? <laughs> Yeah, they mix it. They mix it like that. Uh -huh. I like Tommy it. Tommy gonna be down there giving away some of that lajon. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, well. <laughs> that lajon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, you know, they do that Creole French right there, sure. That's what they Creole do. French, baby. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're trying to uh. put a little sexy on it. I see with that's your how they, voice. That's how they talk. Everybody uh -huh. Louisiana. They, I, I don't know what it is. They get born with that swag <laughs> like that. They just be talking. You know, just thank you. Coming up. <laughs> It is the strawberry letter. The subject is, why is my man so childish? People ask me that all the time. Why are those guys you work with so childish? Uh, but oh, anyway. not us. <laughs> oh, no, you did not. Wait a you minute. know they do. You know they say it. They're so crazy. They're so ignorant. They're so crazy. They're so childish. All right, we'll We're be back. Childish. We'll get into the strawberry letter right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey guys, before we get to the strawberry letter today, I want to let you know that my Love Shirley Strawberry Candle Collection is out, and you can go to loveshirleystrawberry.com to pick one up, just okay. in time for Mother's Day, okay? Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. It is time for today's strawberry letter, and if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your strawberry letter to steveharveyfm.com. All you have to do is click Submit Strawberry Letter, all right? And we could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now, 
Pop, pop. You never know. It could be yours. <laughs> you never know. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. The strawberry letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, why it's my man so childish? Why? Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm too old to be playing games with my husband. He's 60 and I'm 58 years old. He's a coach and loves to line dance, so he usually he's usually at a game or down at the lounge for a dance. I used to dance with him, but I injured my knee so I get to enjoy my quiet time when he's gone because he's a handful. He just started being a jokester lately and he actually acts like he was raised by wolves now. He undresses and leaves his clothes right in front of the dirty clothes bin instead of putting them in it. He will not do anything around the house unless it benefits him. If he needs to soak his old bones after dancing, he'll wash the tub. If he wants to eat a certain thing for dinner, he goes and gets it without offering me anything. He leaves a drop of milk, juice, mayo, or whatever it is and puts it back in the refrigerator. I realize that he reverted to his childhood after our last son moved out. In addition to cleaning up behind him, I have to deal with the other childish stuff he does. He falls asleep with gum in his mouth and it's gotten all over his pillow in our bed and on the cushions of our sofa. He has at least eight different types of cereal just for him. If we're making love, he'll crack jokes at the worst times. Uh, He faked a Charlie horse once and had me panicking, thinking I had hurt him during sex. So now I'm reluctant to be intimate with his silly behind. (laughs) When he's driving, he likes to hit the brakes and then the accelerator so he can laugh at my head bobbing back and forth. I swear this man is on my last nerve with his childishness. His football team loves him because he's youthful and fun to be around. But it's too much for me at the house. How can I get my husband to change his childish ways? Ooh. uh, (laughs) uh, What is your man doing? What is, what's happening? Uh, Who has time for for all of this? I mean, we're really grown up in here. We really are. And yes, the things he's doing uh, are very childish. He, He, He's doing the kind of stuff that can truly get on your last nerve. And it, it must have something to do with him hanging out with the young football team and, and getting caught up with them. You know, maybe that's what they do. And, and he started thinking he's one of them. He's old enough uh, <laughs> to be their grandfather at 60 years old. And he's pranking you during sex. Wow. Uh, and, and the stopping and going while driving. Lord have mercy. Um <laughs> <laughs> you didn't tell us what it was like before, you know, he started doing all this, but I'm assuming it was the polar opposite of this. Maybe not, you know, but I'm assuming it was the polar opposite because you're just complaining about it now. So um, he knows what to do. I mean, he's he's just not doing it anymore. Maybe he thinks his, his youth is fleeting and, it, and it's... You know, he wants to try and keep infusing that into his life since he's around the kids. They like him. They think he's fun. They think, you know, uh, he's one of them probably. But I I think it's time to have that talk with him and let him know that he needs to stop it and he needs to stop it now. He's not a 20-year-old, so please quit acting like it. I mean, he could pull that stuff with the kids, but you're way too grown for for his shenanigans now. And you got to let him know that. I, I, I really hope for you that your knee heals so you guys can get back to doing what you used to do, going out dancing and having fun, maybe that will help. Steve? This marriage is over. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not going to try to say this one right here. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, I think you should leave him. You know, you know, you know, sometimes, man, I don't really, she don't want a divorce. Yeah. That's why I'm suggesting a Uh divorce, because obviously it's not entered her mind. Because she wants me to help her get her husband to change his childish way. How? If you just look at the stuff he's doing this child. Now, taking the clothes off in front of the hamper and leaving them there, I don't know if that's childish. That's just trifling. Yeah. Then he don't do nothing around the house unless it benefits him. And I don't do much around my house either. I can't understand that. You have help. You have, yeah. But if he needs to soak his old bones after dancing, he'll wash the tub. If he wants to eat a certain thing for dinner, he go get it without offering me nothing. This dude right here. Yeah. He, he leaves a corner of milk in the carton. Mm. 
He drank all the damn Kool-Aid. <laughs> ain't but a sip of juice. And ain't no mayonnaise down there but at the bottom. We should get in trouble for that as kids. <laughs> and then he put it back in the refrigerator. Mm-hmm. And you realized all this after your son moved out. Now, in, in, now also, be, uh, in addition to cleaning up after him, here's mm-hmm. what she said. <laughs> I got to deal with other childish stuff he does. He fall asleep with gum in his mouth, and it get all over his pillow, our bed, and on the cushions on the sofa. Damn, dog. So when you when the <laughs> gum fall out your mouth, you roll in it, it stick to your face, and then you roll to the other side? You don't live with a child. You live with a four-legged animal. This ain't got nothing to do with your childhood. What about I'll have your- more. Oh, oh, we're going to get to that right there. Yes, please. <laughs> All right. All right, we'll have part two of Steve's uh, response to this strawberry letter coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. The subject today is, why is my man so childish? We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. I know you don't like this one. I don't either. But she needs help, this woman does. The subject is, why is my man so childish? Well, he's 60, she's 58. Mm -hmm. He a coach, and he loved the line dance. So he's usually at a game or down at the lounge for a dance. Could be Texas. He could be Texas. Mm -hmm. Could be. Well, line dance dance could be the electric side, second line in this New Orleans. Okay, so he could be anywhere. They could yeah, be anywhere. okay, so it don't matter. He, no, he's 60. He's That's too not old the issue. <laughs> uh, if you want to see the certain thing for dinner, he'll go get it. Don't offer me nothing. Mm. He yeah. leave a corn of milk, juice, mayo, and then whatever it is, and put it back in the refrigerator. He did all this when he reverted back to his childhood after your last son moved out. Then she's mad because she got to deal with the other childish stuff he does. Let's go. He fall asleep with gum in his mouth and is getting all over the pillow in our bed and on the cushions on our sofa. So what I said before break is he chews the gum and falls out of his mouth. He roll in it. He gets stuck on his face. He rolled to the other side. Now he getting caught up in the gum like a spider web. Now gum is everywhere, okay? Then she says... He has at least eight d- different types of cereal just for him. What? So let, he got Sugar Crisp. Definitely. He got Cap'n Crunch. Uh-huh. Apple Jacks. <laughs> Cuckoo, Fruit Cuckoo, Loops. Cuckoo. All these yeah. is really kid-ass cereal because he yeah. like colors. <laughs> Apple Jacks, Fruit Loops, Tricks. Tricks, for sure. <laughs> Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. You know he has that one. He got Lucky Charms. Uh-huh. Yep. He got Count Chocula. Uh-huh. That's ah. really a baby ass cereal. <laughs> and fruity, one fruity more. Pebbles. Fruity Pebbles. Ooh, fruity I'll be pebble. damned. Fruity <laughs> Pebble. He a full blown baby now. <laughs> All the different color rocks in my bowl. I ain't never wanted that. I couldn't stand that. I've always been a Cheerio man myself. I love Cheerios. Oh, yeah, Cheerios. And Wheaties, because I thought Wheaties was going to change my life. I actually <laughs> ate Wheaties because I thought it would get me on the box. <laughs> I didn't make the box, but I did get on TV. How? Oh, <laughs> Look at God. <laughs> God would do exceedingly and abundantly over all you think I had. Here I wanted on a seal box, and he put me on TV. Look at God. Now let's get down to it. If we make in love, he'll crack jokes at the worst time. Oh, what in the world is this fool doing? Knock, knock. What is he saying? <laughs> yeah, knock, knock. <laughs> Guess who's there? <laughs> Peppermint. Peppermint who? Peppermint stick. <laughs> <laughs> this is not funny. <laughs> this is not funny. <laughs> Knock, knock. <laughs> who's there? <laughs> Fish. Who's there? Fish? Fish who? Fish who? Long John Silver. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, 
Anyway. You're stupid. <laughs> yeah. Now, he said, now, he got a good one right here. When he's driving, I hate he likes this. to hit the brake and then accelerate so he can <laughs> laugh in my head, bobbling back and forth. I'll wait till you drink a coffee. That boy, let me tell you something. If oh, I do that, stupid. if I did that to Marjorie, no, I can't even tell you. you She'll look at me, me like I lost my damn mind. Are you yes. playing? But he laughing though. You could just anyway. I swear this man is on my last nerve with his child. His football team loves him because he's youthful and he's fun to be around. But it's too much for me at the house. How can I get my husband to change his ways? Divorce. His childish. This is divorce. There's no hope for it, you don't think? Well, you know, he's on her nerves. Yeah. And that's what the problem is. And when you're 60 and people on your nerves, it's worse. <laughs> yes. Because now you're dating this. I, I, this is not a good letter to me. I don't know what to tell her, Cheryl. I don't even have energy for this letter. I just don't. Yeah. I just... Disappointing. Because you don't, yeah. it's really. Anything you want to ask me about the letter, Shirley, that I might be able to respond to? Because I, I really don't care. Well, okay. Because I did suggest that, um, you know, I, uh, hopefully her knee will heal quickly. Maybe her going back to the club with him and then. She don't want to go down there, yeah. Shirley. <laughs> in the oh, letter, I mean, it clearly, says, it her, clearly says in the letter, though, I hurt uh, my knee so I can't. But I'm enjoying my quiet she's time enjoying without him. Because she can't stand him right now because he's so childish. Yeah. Right. So she sure ain't going down here to line dance. He down there yeah. putting his pants down and everything. Because he's stupid. <laughs> he got that dumbass sense of humor. <laughs> yes. this is, He's acting like a kid. I mean, hmm. I don't know what would make a man do this. A grown man, a 60-year-old. Unless he's trying to recapture his youth. Well, this ain't leave him. Paid. She paid. We don't do, do this. Though. Yeah, they pay us yeah. to be stupid, and we don't do this. Yeah, I, I just don't think she wants to leave. But him see, right I don't now. know what to tell you. When you got a stupid man, you just in bad shape. Yeah, yeah. You can have a stupid son, but you can't have a stupid husband, though. Oof. It's like having a stupid son <laughs> married to this sixty-year-old man. All right, listen. Um, Please leave your comments on today's letter on Instagram at uh, Steve Harvey FM and check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up next, it is Sports Talk with Junior (laughs) right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Man, Uncle Tommy, did y'all see this NBA playoffs last night? Boy, (laughs) what? Yeah. Memphis, baby. <laughs> Come on, Grizzlies, man. These, these Grizzlies is balling. First of all, man, it's tied at 106 to 106. After Anthony Edwards hit a three, man, to tie the game. Man, listen, I don't know how John Morant got this layup off with 3.2 seconds left in the game, huh? A layup. Bad, bad boy. Yeah, uh, man. But, but, but a layup without getting fouled? Man. Nah, you ain't even do this here. Not in old school <laughs> basketball. You, can't, you just can't go straight to the lane in 85. Lane? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the last thing you'll see. Man. When you I, wake up from the hospital. Yeah. All you be talking about, I was going to the lane. That, <laughs> that don't happen. That's all it. Man, they take a 3-2 series lead. John Moran almost had a triple-double, man, 13-9. But also now we got the Hawks in the heat, man, and we just got to say goodbye to the Hawks. They are now officially out, man. They lost to the Heat 97-94. and You know, your stars got to show up, man, in these big games. Trey Young, just 11 points, uh, 8 rebounds, 6 assists. 0 for 5 from behind the arc, man. 2 for 12 for the game. And now, you know, they I mean, they you know, man, you have games. It's not like he's afraid or anything. You just have games like this is a bad time to have a game. I'd probably be 0 for 5 from behind the arc, too. I, so. I, I would be, too. I, I'd probably be 0 for 13. Well, That's we how are... you make the show interesting, Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> In your mind. <laughs> for all of the people out there like you who don't know who Trey Young is. <laughs> I do. Hello. Hello. Yeah, well, that's easy it. to assume. <laughs> that she, she already know. Oh, I got it. I know that. <laughs> and, man, the Phoenix Suns, no Devin Booker, no problem. They all took over the Pelicans, 112-97. to 97. Suns take a 3-2 lead. Uh, if you don't know Michael Bridges, you will know him now. He's 
21 points last night, man. This boy was on fire. Chris Paul dropped a double-double. 22 points and 11 assists. Damn, they take a 3-2 lead, man. I, I just, you know, they number, uh, number one, number eight. You know, it's, it's a good series. I know that much. It is a good series. Also tonight, yeah. we got the Bulls and the Bucks. Uh, you think they going home tonight? Milwaukee leads 3-1. Bye. Bye. Oh. Bye. <laughs> yep. bye, Bull. Yeah, sorry, Chicago. Oh, so we Y'all got know the, what's happening. He said bye. Nuggets and the Warriors. Golden State leads the series 3-1. to one. Did we say goodbye to the Nuggets? Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs> Good run. <laughs> <laughs> the ones I'm worried right, about right, Philly, here. man. I want Philly to win, but I'm a little concerned right now. Oh, oh yeah. We'll All right, thank you, Junior. Coming up more. Up. Come on, Philly. <laughs> more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show at the top of the hour right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so this is for the fellas. Guys, RP, his name is RP from Florida, wrote this. RP is 16 years old, he says, and my prom is April 30th. So I hope to see, I hope you see this before then. It will be my first date and I'm very shy and have never been with a girl. An 11th grader asked me to go to the prom. She's also square, but she's cute. My dad is a player and he calls me a nerd. So I know he will make a big deal out of it if I ask him for advice. I need to know, this is RP asking you guys, I need to know what am I supposed to talk about when I pick her up and at dinner. He wants to know if you guys have any tips for him, Steve. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do. I've been 16 there. years old, first prom. I've been there. He's shot. The key to having a good time with a young lady is to be a gentleman. That's the most important thing. To cater to her, open doors for her, pull the chairs out for her uh you know be polite to her you know open her car door for her close the door pull her chair out when she goes to the restroom stand Stand up at the table when she comes back stand up at the table uh you want to be a gentleman at all times uh you want to talk about school subjects in school What's her favorite thing to do? Talk to her about her hobbies, what she likes, what she enjoys. Occasionally put in what you like and enjoy, but Mm -hmm. mostly be very, very inquisitive. Ask a lot of questions, and whenever you can, be complimentary. Tell her how nice her hair looks. Eventually notice her shoes. Tell her how nice her dress is. And this is not all at once. No, don't just you gotta run all spread this, after this that. out. Yeah, you got to <laughs> spread this out through the evening, oh like it's oh, all yeah. coming to you. You you run it all together, you are gonna be out. Oh my right. God, your hair is so beautiful. Yeah. Oh. Your wow. dress look like your hair look like your your. <laughs> Not <laughs> that, <laughs> Steve. He's shy, so he may feel a little awkward doing this because this is not. Um, you know what kids a lot of kids are being taught now they don't know the yeah I got that but you got it we yeah. got I know it's gonna be hard because you're kind of shy but you got to yeah. move past this because here's the advantage she asked you so at least she's comfortable and likes you now she's a square two as you put it so that's good that helps yeah that helps mm-hmm. she ain't out there in the fast lane and you ain't either that's yeah. a good place to be. So it's just so relax, here. man, and know that she asked you to go to the prom, yeah. so she must think you're a pretty cool kid. You know what I mean? Now, don't be something that you're not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a player like his daddy. <laughs> yeah, your daddy. No. Don't, don't be do your crazy. daddy thing. Don't do that. trying to talk like your dad. You <laughs> Get her whatever it is they're hey. doing at proms now, if it's a corsage, if it's a, some flowers, Mm-hmm. Get us something, whatever you all doing now at the prom. I don't know what's happening no more, but do that and just be extra polite and smile a lot. And when she asks you what you smiling at, your mm-hmm. answer is always you. Yeah. Aww. And just smile a lot because look, mm-hmm. man, the thing that you want back is the thing you have to put out. So if you want a lot of smiles, you have to smile a lot. 
you know, when she's getting out the car, hold her hand. When you open the door, hold her arm, walk into the door. Just every chance you get. And then ask her when you're walking up, can I hold your hand as we walk to the door? Do you mind if I hold your hand to escort you? Use words like that just to get, because all you really want to do is hold her hand. You're damn the reason. Mm -hmm. You know, we just want to hold hands. And then if you want, you need that advanced lesson, we go from here later on. All right, RP, have fun at the prom. That's so sweet. Have fun. Great advice. Great advice. All right, coming up in 20 minutes. Mouthwash. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Grooming is important. All right, coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So Judge Greg Mathis has a brand new docuseries in the works. It's going to be on the E-Network. It is called Mathis Family Matters, and it will follow Judge Mathis, his beautiful wife, Linda, and their four grown children as they navigate through life, love, and, of course, Hollywood. Mathis Family Matters is the title. It will offer fans a rare look, a very rare look, into Judge Mathis' life outside the courtroom. It premieres in June on E, like I said, the wow. E-Network. Uh, he has a beautiful family, so I'm sure there will be some black excellence going on in this docu-series. They're not calling it a reality show. They're calling it a docu-series. So the question is, would you guys do a reality show if the price is right? Oh, I got asked to do one. I passed. Ooh, I passed. Well, what, what would you have called about Harvey? What would you have called it? I have no idea, but it was all about me and my family and the uh, day-to-day of of my Miles crew. Uh-huh. Oh, because that's what you said, because they already got that title. Little people out there already. <laughs> 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 it's really no sad. way. It's, it's no way I can do it. Uh, it's no way. It's just no way. I've but seen what but, it can do to people, man, what it can do to a relationship. Yeah. It, <laughs> it can up. destroy you. Get it, my, my career is over at that point. Friendships break up. Your career is over, you think, Steve? Oh, yeah. They they can't see what's happening at this house. <laughs> People would love it. It would be the number one show on any network. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after the hour. We'll do a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now, guys, for Would You Rather. Would you rather sleep without a pillow or sleep without a blanket. Which one? Hell, I got to have a blanket. Yeah. Cause I'm naked. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I sleep naked. I got to have a blanket. Oh, that, that part. <laughs> now it's gonna be rough without a pillow, but I tell you, it cannot happen without a blanket. The blanket provides too much comfort. Yeah, it does. Yeah. You know, you ever mm-hmm. you ever pull up and pull that extra blanket up, and then that extra warmth just sank you into that sleep uh-huh. deeper. Yeah, they even have those weighted yes. blankets now that help you sleep. I you know, got that. Them. You got one? I keep a blanket. What? I got a bunch of them. Does it help you sleep? I don't have one. Does it help you? He said he has one. I said I had one. Well, she asked well, you a follow-up you, question I, and you ignored her. It's what she's angry about. I couldn't I couldn't hear. I'm bad. I couldn't hear. <laughs> I Can said, we say it again? <laughs> what I said. It helped me sleep better because Jackie got the air on 50. <laughs> <laughs> I just answered. Dang. Are you on a delay? Hey, dog, all right, hey, we're moving dog, on. Dog, dog, dog. Can you, you all right, Tommy? It's a little delay right now. It's, yes. just, it's throwing us okay. off because you're all normally right. real all sharp right. and quick, and right now you got that little dull marble thing working. <laughs> Just to it's not me. <laughs> okay. It's not me. All right. Would you? We're moving on. Would you rather Take tell two. your mate? <laughs> would you? Would you move? Would you rather tell your mate everything you did yesterday? Tell your mate every single thing you did, or would you rather buy her a car? <laughs> I'm buying a car. Oh. Woo. You can't tell her what you do she yesterday. Asked us this. She, she yeah. asked us this every other day. Quick. <laughs> Always somebody no. mate. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, just in case you just said fleet. something real crazy. Yeah. You know. The argument I'm trying to avoid, sure. I don't need to uh-huh. argue. So buy you're going to buy her a car, okay? Yeah, absolutely. So you going to. So so when I call. Buying a fleet. You didn't have time to talk to me 
<laughs> but you would swear at the golf store with who? Uh, but see, no. Yeah. Here, here's a car. Hell. Here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Like that. All right. Uh, would you rather do five different positions every time you were intimate or only one position forever? Variety is the spice of life. I just yeah. five. Five. So five different five. times every yeah. single yeah. time? Yeah. 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 Or only one position yeah. forever? No. no. I like that five. Okay. Yeah. No, we got to have them five. Yeah. All right, lovers. That All quarterback right. and center. Woo! Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, we got I, We need five. We need All right. Five. Not one. So five. Every, every single time. Same damn thing. Hold on, man. <laughs> You're getting bored. <laughs> All right, that's today's version of Would You Rather. Um, and at 49 minutes after the hour, we'll be back with our last break of the day and some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are, our last break of the day on this crazy Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. You guys. So I want to ask you a question. The yes, sir. The lawyer who did the uh, class about me. What's her name again? Oh, Professor Mo Ivory, Morema Ivory, but we call her Mo. Mo Ava. Uh-huh. Mo Ivory, Ivory. Mo, Mo Ivory. She uh-huh. was a Morena, professor. Morema Ivory. Mm-hmm. Jesus, make up your mind. Girl. What is it? I can't learn it if you don't give Morena, it to me. Morema. Ivory, but we call her She's Mo a Ivory. Professor of Law at Georgia State. Yes. And uh, they did a, they conducted a class on me for a, a, a year or semester of mm-hmm. the business life of Steve Harvey. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even know it. They told me they were going to do it, but I didn't. I didn't really think it was going to happen. But they did a whole semester in a law class, and last night uh, was the culmination of it. And I was able to go to, they invited me to be the uh, fireside chat at the end of the course. So it was the end of the course and I went. Mm-hmm. And I was in front of about uh, 100 or 200, I guess, a couple hundred law students. Mm-hmm. And I sat there and it was really, really interesting, man. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Georgia State. It was one of the greatest honors I've ever received. I mean, who would have thought in a million years that my life would be worth being studied by some law students. So yeah. I was so honored uh, mm-hmm. because it's, 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 it's unthinkable. You know what I mean? It wasn't on the vision board, wasn't on the bucket list. I mean, it's just unthinkable that someone would think enough of me to do a case study. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people that I've been in business with over the years were invited. Shirley was invited. Uh, uh-huh. to speak as the person who's been doing radio with me the longest. But they had, they bought in my publishers from HarperCollins, former lawyers, uh, former business associates, uh, current people that I do business with, uh, professors that I've known over the years. Just really, really, she did an amazing job of uh, putting together the cast of people that had played a role in my uh, career at one point, time or another. So it was really, really compelling, man. I want to thank uh, uh, Professor Mo Ivory. Uh, she was fantastic. A, I met the dean of the school. I met the president of the university. Uh, it was just a great evening. One of the things that I was impressing upon the young law students was, first of all, I was amazed at how they did it. I mean, all of these students... They've gone to law school, but then right after that, they entered, I mean, they've gone to regular college and gotten degrees, right? And then they go to law school. Mm-hmm. And I just, I just congratulate, because I'm always impressed with people who are educated because it's something I, I didn't accomplish in my life. I just, at the time, I wasn't able to. I'm not, I'm really not able to now, but I was just impressed with people who get degrees and educate themselves. I think that's an amazing talent because I was reminding them that smart is a talent. Being smart is a talent. And it's as good a talent as running, running, jumping, singing, and dancing. What I said to them was, after you get this college degree and it's hanging on the wall, what you do with your life after that is, is really going to begin. And if you think getting this degree was hard, oh my, oh my, mm-hmm. you just wait. 
because you're going to enter into this thing called life. It won't be no more studying and all this here. It's on the job training. All your studying will be in the field. And I just reminded them that the most important thing in their life is their dream. See, and I said, the dream has gotten you this far so far. You know, you dream of becoming a lawyer. So that has spurred you to get an education, which proves my point when I say that to dream is the most important thing in your life. It's even more important than education. I've been stopped by several people at a school one time. They actually cut the mic off and said, how dare you stand in front of an institution of education and tell these children that something is more important than their education because it's not. I said, excuse me, ma'am, it really is. I said, because you really don't have given me time to explain to the children and what I'm about to say to you is this. If you learn what a child dreams about, the dream will spur you to get an education. If you got a child that dreams of, I asked a kid one time in my camp, what do you want to be? He said, man, Mr. Harvey, I'd love to fly a plane. And we just bought out all this stuff on the internet about flying planes, and he was just lit up. And then I told him, these are the subjects you're going to have to really be good at to fly a plane. You're going to really have to understand science. You're really going to have to understand math. You're going to have to understand some physics. He went, oh, I could do that. I, could, I just want to fly the plane. Because, see, the dream made the education more doable. And even when you get the education, you must, you absolutely have to. I don't care who you are, how old you are, when the last time you've been to school, it doesn't matter. You have got to acknowledge the dream. The dream is your everything, y'all. The dream is the thing that will keep you and drive you. Honor the dream. Focus on the dream. It's never too late to dream. It's never too late to make a dream come true. Don't ever give up on the dream. I don't care what kind of degree you got. Because once you get a degree and you start pursuing the dream, ain't nobody going to ask you about that degree no more. Nobody has ever asked me to this day, Steve Harvey, what you do major in? Nothing. I majored in dreams. Mm. Here I am. Mm. Those are my closing remarks. Hope you got something out of that today. If you didn't, uh, tune in tomorrow, God willing. Maybe you'll be affected by that one. But in the meantime, talk to God today. He would love to hear from you. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 